Is Disney World's newest restaurant worth a visit? We're gonna find out. Deli time. Deli, deli, deli. We are here today at Boardwalk Deli. It is this spot's opening day. It is a new concept where Boardwalk Bakery used to be. Don't worry, still tons of delicious baked treats, breakfast sandwiches, lunch sandwiches. There's a lot of stuff to try today. We're gonna try a ton of the new options here. And I'm pretty excited, especially because it's made we love going New York. Listen, we're eating deli today, okay? We're I can't eating help deli. It. We're at the deli. We're get, yeah, so I, I, I'm. We're gonna I, have a muffaletta. We're bagel. getting a muffaletta. You're having locks. Are you excited about the deli? I'm actually very excited. Okay. I, I didn't think I would be excited at all. If you don't know this about me, I worked at the Boardwalk Bakery during my DCP, so I, I did cry. I personally think it's going to be delightful. Delightful. Emma and I talked about them last night. Um, I wasn't sure what was going to be vegan, how much of this menu I could eat, but the fact that the breakfast sandwich, like the one thing called a breakfast sandwich, is for people like me. It's for you. Yeah. Emma, hold down the fort. Okay. We're gonna go get hey, sandwiches. Emma, watch the table, all right? Okay. So, Boardwalk Deli, you can walk in and order. They do also have a mobile order option. We did mobile order this morning so that we didn't have to wait in line. And that is always a great tip for you. Um, I believe for mobile order, we walk in this way, but let's find out. We've got some stuff to grab on the side for your coffees. There's this mobile order pickup spot shelf. It makes it really easy. Now you just head out. Now, for those of you who have visited Boardwalk Bakery, you'll notice that it's not that different in here. Some of the red is gone in favor of some more wood tones, but otherwise, it's pretty similar. Menu on the boards up there, huge bakery cases, and just kind of a waiting area here and then a waiting area for her food at the end. There are no tables or seating inside at all. All right, here are the breakfast sandwiches we got. So here we have just a plain bagel with nothing on it. Just a nice New York style plain bagel. This here is you the- You have an accent when you, said, when you said that. The nice New York you know, you, style I think it's rubbing off bagel. on you, kid. It's running, off, it's running off on me. Then here we have the everything bagel with smoked salmon. And this was kind of a build your own situation, which was super fun. This here is the bacon breakfast sandwich on a plain bagel. Here is the sausage breakfast sandwich that comes on an everything bagel. And then this is the plant-based offering, which is the ciabatta breakfast sandwich. And that is plant-based, it looks delicious. All of the sandwiches do come with a side of your choice of fruit between an orange, a banana, and an apple. And these things look pretty amazing. I'm excited to give them a try. We also got a selection of pastry. We've got a blueberry scone, the cannoli. This is called the cinnamon yummy. It's basically like a cinnamon bun. There's a blueberry muffin. This is the completely new raspberry tart. It's beautiful. It literally has gold on it. We've got banana bread. And then this is um, the half moon cookie, which is more like a traditional black and white deli cookie. And we had to get that because obviously Boardwalk Deli is the deli. Yeah, we gotta get deli. Yeah, we gotta get deli. I'm gonna go ahead and try out the everything bagel with sausage. It has a runny egg in there. I am a huge fan of everything bagels. They're my favorite kind of bagel. Sausage is my preferred breakfast meat and I love a runny egg, so I'm thrilled about this. Literally in two bites, I ate like most of it. The bagel is amazing. It is a super thick bagel. It's toasted, so it's got that nice crisp on the outside, soft on the inside. The egg was cooked perfectly. It was just a little bit runny, but not a ton. Um, the sausage was great. I honestly didn't taste very much of the sausage. The main flavor I'm getting is the everything bagel. And then it has got plenty of melty cheese too. This, very, very good. My one complaint is that the everything bagel is just a little bit salty, which is fine, I think, once you, once you kind of get past the shock of it. But I would absolutely get this again. This is maybe one of my favorite breakfast sandwiches I've ever had in Disney World. I don't like smoked salmon and Brie loves vegan, so... Uh oh I love smoked salmon. Oh, thank goodness. It is truly my favorite breakfast. Tell thank goodness. Tell us the story of, the, of how you have been waking up for the last week. Every day for the last week, I took myself to Trader Joe's and got a bunch of smoked salmon and bagels and cream cheese because I needed something to wake up to and be excited about. So I've made lox and cream cheese bagels every morning for probably two weeks now. So you're saying this sandwich has a lot to live up to. This is pretty big. We're going to see how it turns out. All right, so I get to try what is probably my favorite breakfast in the world. And I want to see if it holds up here. I normally would not eat it like a sandwich. I eat them open-faced, so that will impact how I feel about this. Did you have it this morning? Mm-mm. Okay. <laughs> I assembled right? this, yes. So it's not, it doesn't... Don't be shocked when it when it comes like this. It actually could be done open face the way you yes. like to do it. That's 
I just assembled it this way because, you know, sometimes they present it as a sandwich on the mobile order. So, but it comes deconstructed. But it comes deconstructed, so you can do whatever you want with it. Very good. The bagel is obviously super fresh. That's really delicious. The salmon is, I think, very fresh. I love smoked, cold smoked salmon. It does have that fishy flavor. If you don't like salmon, and you especially don't like fishy things, you're not gonna like that. But I do, I love sushi. I love, again, cold smoked salmon. You just know if you like fishy things or if you don't. I think it's really, really good. The arugula, they gave you just enough. Again, you get, you kind of get to build this yourself, so you get to make those choices. I put everything on it just to see how it was. I really like it. They give you tons of salmon, which I can super, super appreciate. The only thing I would like is maybe a little bit more red onion, but that's just a me thing. So you probably could ask for more. This bagel is just as good as the other one, which surprises me because I'm less of a bacon person and I don't like plain bagels as much as everything bagels, but this one has this onion jam on it that is changing my life. It's like a sweet onion jam. It's texturally, it's got like actual pieces of onion in it. It goes with the bacon and the egg so well. So this one's really good too. I honestly would have a hard time picking between the two. I would say make the decision based on bacon versus sausage and otherwise you're in for a treat unless you don't like onion jam. All right, it's Vegan Time USA. They've placed me before all of this wonderful fruit, some of it wrapped in cellophane. Here I go for this amazing breakfast sandwich for plant-based eaters on ciabatta. Mmm, okay. I am not the biggest fake egg fan. Mm -hmm. Anyway, normally fake egg, vegan egg is made out of mung bean. And, um, you know, it can be good. I'm waiting for the fake egg aftertaste, and they've done a really good job of concealing it with something sweet. Oh. There's something sweet going on. There's like a jam on here. Mm-hmm. There's like a pepper jelly, mm -hmm. a jalapeno jelly. I'll find out exactly what it is. That sounds really yummy. Yeah. Okay, so what we have going on here is a plant-based eggs florentine, and that is really delicious it's not like very herbaceous i would say um it's not like totally it doesn't pack a punch of flavor i might throw some rosemary or some more herbs in there to make it um, a little more flavorful but it doesn't have the aftertaste that vegan eggs have a lot of time that i don't really love it has fake cheese it's got this tomato jam that's what it is the tomato jam makes it it's this sweetness that comes through every time i get a little bite of it i'm obsessed with it all right i'm trying out the cinnamon yummy oh my goodness i'm gonna say something unhinged this is better than a gaston cinnamon roll <gasps> it is so sticky and there's so much cinnamon loaded in there it's not as big there's not icing, so if you're an icing person, you'll probably still like the Gaston cinnamon roll better. But this, super sticky, super sweet and cinnamony. There's a lot of like sugary texture and taste. And you can get this toasted and heated up. Oh my goodness, this is a game changer. This is better than both the breakfast sandwiches I've had. Everything I've had so far I've liked. Trying out the banana bread. It's okay. Honestly, I probably wouldn't get this banana bread. It's not anywhere as near as good as homemade banana bread. I honestly like Starbucks's banana bread a little bit more than this. It just doesn't have a ton of flavor. It's moist, but it's not moist enough. It's not super sweet. I can taste the banana, but it's not really like knocking me down with banana flavor. So not my favorite. I would skip this. Blueberry muffin. Now that's good. Big whole blueberries in it. It's got that like crumbly topping that blueberry muffins have a lot of the time. That's my favorite part. And the blueberries are huge and super sweet, but with that little bit of blueberry tartness that really like bring the muffin all together. The batter of the actual muffin is really good too. It's sweet, but it's not too sweet. It still feels like breakfast. Uh, yeah, absolutely very good. It's more basic though. It's not as exciting as say the cinnamon yummy or the raspberry tart. So kind of your decision. If you get it, if you're craving a blueberry muffin, it's a good one. If not, it's not the most exciting thing you can get in Disney World. Blueberry scone. I'm not a big scone person. I don't like how dry they are. This one's really good. It's crumbly. It's got that like, sort of like crumbly, crunchy texture from the sugar on it. And it's got the huge whole blueberries in it as well. 
Again, not the most special thing in the world, but if you're really craving a scone, it's a great thing to just grab. It's cool for grab and go. You can eat it out of the bag if you're walking from Boardwalk to Epcot in the morning. So another good one. Pastry so far so good, except the banana bread, not my favorite. Okay, we're about to try. I'm actually very excited for my turn. I'm, where are you going? Let's see. My boots are opening, baby. I gotta cover them. Oh. You're just gonna leave us here and yeah. go eat at Food and Wine? Yes, if you want to see the Food and Wine video, Go check it out, it's already up on the channel. And you guys just join me when you're done uh, yeah, eating delicious uh, Oh, yeah. I for one would like to see this video. Yeah, okay. Okay, well, enjoy yourself. So I'm gonna start with the cannoli. It's got a cute little Mickey. So, it's very good. As far as cannolis go, I'm not a big cannoli person. I don't really love the, it's not breading. The fried breading around the edges though, that's what I'm gonna call it. I know that's not the correct name. It's very sweet. Of course, the breading is very subtle. It's There's no sweetness to it, which cuts through all of the good cream in the middle. It tastes like a traditional vanilla kind of chocolate chip cream in the middle, but there's definitely some lemon in here, which I actually really like. It's really good. That lemon adds a really special and unique flavor to me. It's very sweet. It cuts through the chocolate and through the cream. It's a great addition. I actually really like it, and I'm not a big cannoli fan. However, I will say, if you don't like cannolis and you know you don't like cannolis, there's no reason to order this. It's not that special. It's not that unique. It's not going to change my opinion overall on cannolis, but it's a good one. I'm happy to have tried it. All right, so next I'm going to do the raspberry cheese danish. I actually really love cheese danishes. I'm really excited to see what this one is like. It looks like it's really heavy on the breading. I don't love a ton of bread, so we're going to see how that turns out. It was very heavy on the breading. I only am eating bread right now. <laughs> the croissant breading, it's very good. It's just a lot. I would have preferred a lot more cheese, a lot more raspberry. Like what you can see on the top, like that is it. I'm gonna take a gross bite to try it, I'm sorry. And see, that's delicious. The raspberries are super fresh, like burst in your mouth, very juicy. The cheese is a really good compliment to that. I mean, I just, it could use a little bit more. That's where I think it's lacking, is they could use more of what makes it good and I like croissants, just not enough to eat just, just this. Okay, so officially the name is Raspberry Danish, so no cheese, so that takes away a lot of what I said, but it still just needs a little bit more. I would have been a, a really a lot more pleased with more raspberry, more of this delicious topping. It's still just too croissanty for me, too too heavy on the bread. So I have what is technically just a black and white cookie, but they are calling it the NY New York Half Moon Cookie. It looks a little bit different than what I would consider to be a traditional black and white cookie. I love black and white cookies from New York. So what do you know about black and white cookies? I only visited a handful of times. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. I don't like it. You don't like it? Really? No. Is it dry? It's a little bit dry. Okay. Traditionally, black and white cookies are kind of spongy, but also weirdly dry. Yes. Okay. okay. That, does that have the sponginess? It has the sponginess, but I think what's holding me back, maybe I've never had a traditional black and white cookie in my life, Yeah. but I don't like that the cookie itself is chocolate. Uh-huh. Like, is, traditionally, they're not chocolate yeah, cookies, the are they? Yeah, the I think, is the only part. Yes. Yeah. Frosty is the only part that makes it black and white. Yes. And I I don't like that it's chocolate. I understand they're trying to do a little something fun, a little something different. Oh, um, if you love chocolate, this is a great option. I'm just not a huge fan of I love chocolate, but like in a healthy, not healthy, in a moderate sense. The white frosting is good. I think if this whole cookie had more white frosting, yeah. I know that d defeats the point of black and white. But the flavor of the white frosting on the top of the chocolate cookie makes it really good. They could have like colored it, yeah. you know. I just think the chocolate's a lot for me. If you love a lot of chocolate, you're really probably gonna like this. I That's what I would say. I think I've preferred the previous black and white cookies that I've had in the past. I am going to enjoy every single one of these at home. These if Quincy crazy. wants any these of it. These. Yeah, I'm honestly gonna have to freeze these. I, we've saved all of our containers, so I truly can take all of this with us. Because now we have to start on lunch. I'm gonna go ahead and start while he finishes up. 
So of course I'm going to start with what I think I'm most excited about, which is going to be the grilled cheese and the tomato soup. I'm going to look up exactly what's in it so I can tell you. All right, so I'm going to start with the grilled cheese and the tomato soup. So the grilled cheese is provolone and cheddar. I don't know if you can really see that. I think you can. So it's provolone and cheddar. And then the tomato soup is a tomato basil soup, which I actually really love. They did have this previously at the boardwalk. Um, so I'm eager to see if it's changed at all. <laughs> Obviously they had it at the boardwalk. They had it at the boardwalk bakery. So I'm eager to see if it's changed at all. Okay, here we go. First bite. Cheers. First thoughts, it's very good. Of course, you know us, we have to take our photos and videos. So it's a little bit chilly at this point, but that's literally just because we took a bunch of pictures and videos of it. The cheese is really good. It's good and gooey. I bet if you ate this like fresh out, it would be amazing. It would be really, really, and you know that good cheese pull? I don't even know how to describe that, but that's what I mean. You would have a great cheese pull out of that. The provolone cheddar is very good. It's nice and complimentary. This is gonna sound really weird, but when they had it at the Boardwalk Bakery, it had pickles on it, like a sweet pickle. Oh my gosh, it was so good. I would love if this still had that, but I know that's very niche, like a me opinion. I don't know if everyone would share that. I love it. I would love to have had that back. Even if I, that could be like an option, that would be really good to me. But overall, good grilled cheese, not reinventing the mold per se, but for picky eaters, this is gonna be a good option. So, now we're gonna do tomato basil. Cheers. It's very good. Initially, my initial thoughts, I'm just jumping to it. The basil is very strong, I actually really like that. It's really, really good, it's very creamy. You can tell they've had at least a little bit of a heavy cream in here, in addition to the tomato soup and the basil. I would I actually would really love maybe a little bit of cheese or like feta or something on top. I think that would be really like a nice, good, creamy addition oh, yeah. to this. That's really good. I actually really like that. Overall, I love a good grilled cheese and tomato soup moment. I'm gonna dip it just because why don't, you know, why would you not? Mm. Again, if I think, I think if you're eating this fresh, it'd be fantastic. Very simple, very easy, but a little bit of an elevated grilled cheese and tomato soup. I really like that. Okay, so next I'm gonna be trying the chicken salad wrap. It's a rotisserie chicken with Grapes, walnuts, mayonnaise, and a spinach wrap. And then of course you get your choice of side, which for us, we chose the house-made chips. I'm very excited. All right, okay, here we go. I am weird about chicken salad. I am weird about walnuts. Kind of weird about mayonnaise. So here we go. So first thoughts, it's very heavy on the chicken. I can really appreciate that. They do not skimp on the chicken at all. And it's good big chunks of white rotisserie chicken. I really like that actually. It's very good. I got several walnuts in my first few bites. I don't love that, but if you're somebody who loves a good crunch in your chicken salad, this is a good crunch. I would have liked to have seen more grapes. That's kind of my only complaint. As far as somebody who doesn't love it, I do like a sweeter chicken salad. So I would have really liked to have the grapes in there, but it's not bad. This is actually probably a really good healthier option out of what we you know everything they have. I actually don't hate it, which for me is, that's pretty good. If you like chicken salad, this is a good plain one. There, again, not really reinventing the mold with the chicken salad, but it's good. It's very light. If you're looking, looking for something good and cold on a hot day, I think this is probably a really good option. I don't know that I would necessarily order it again, but if I'm looking for something lighter and healthier, I would be happy to order this. So I, I'll, give it, I'll give it that, not bad. All right, so next I am moving on to the Italian sub. I'm weird about Italian subs. This is, there we go. This is what it looks like. Let me flip it around and I'll read you what all is lovely and in here. So in the Italian sub, there is capicola, so, so prezza? Where's Craig when I need him to and pronounce these things? Pepperoni. Sorry, pepperoni, provolone, arugula, tomato, arugula pesto, and mayonnaise all on ciabatta bread. And of course, served with your choice of side. So it's, it looks good and hefty. You know I feel weird about too much bread. So here we go. I am probably doing something that's like the cardinal sin to people who enjoy deli food. And I'm gonna try to squish it down because I just can't take that big of a bite. I'm, it's not, I can't do that. I'm not physically capable. 
Okay. So, I've squished it a little bit. That's really good, actually. I'm someone, I like an everything pizza, like all the meat, you know, meat lover's pizza. I love stuff like that. This is actually very good if you like a lot of meat in there. The pesto comes through a little bit, not a ton. Um, I love pesto, so I would have liked a little bit more of that. Of course, the ciabatta bread is really heavy. Um, you know I don't like that much bread. I really enjoy like the fillings of sandwiches rather than just a ton of bread. But it's great ciabatta. It's very fresh, very crunchy. The meat's super good. Uh, there's just the perfect amount of mayonnaise. It's not too much, but you can get the taste and the flavor of it. If you like an Italian sub, you're gonna like this. If you like pepperoni, if you like pesto, if you like mozzarella, I think you'll really like it. I think it's a good sandwich. I probably would get it again. The only reason I wouldn't is because it's pretty big, so I think you could probably share it. Okay, Emma's sandwich journey saga continues. So we're on to the roasted chicken sandwich. It is cheddar, lettuce, tomato, roasted garlic aioli on ciabatta served with a side. And they didn't say chicken except in the name, but obviously there's some chicken in there. So let's give this a shot. Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is just simple. Rotisserie chicken, lots of good lettuce, great cheese, perfect amount of mayonnaise. That's really good, very light, very refreshing. This is gonna be my number two, absolutely. Really love that. I would absolutely order this one again. While we're here, of course, I'm gonna go ahead and try the house made chip because, I mean, why not? What are they, the, the chips? Yeah. Yes. I want you to try one. They're house made. What, what tastes are you getting? Amazing. Okay. What did you get? Is there vinegar on them? Are you getting a vinegar? Maybe it's say. just that. They're great, but I, I don't like salt and vinegar, and so I, my first bite I thought had a little bit. Well here, look at how they're translucent. In mm -hmm. fact, let me turn it so that you can see in the sun. Okay, um, no, then one I just had was very good. I feel like a lot of oil has ended up mm -hmm. absorbing but in them. We've had these for a while, so That's I think it true. could just be sitting in the heat. Great and crunchy, good and salty. No, I think this is just like a house-made potato chip. I think it's really good. After my last few bites, I prefer it. My first one, I got nervous. Okay, so this is my last sandwich, and it is the warm pastrami Reuben. It has sauerkraut, Swiss, Thousand Island dressing on a marble rye, and it has your choice of side. I keep saying that, but they all come with a choice of side. I am so scared because I do not like sauerkraut or honestly pastrami, really. But I see a pickle, so that might save me. The pickle is a good touch. I really like the pickle. I don't like the sauerkraut. I knew I wouldn't. I just don't. It's just not my favorite. If you, you know if you like sauerkraut, if you don't know, maybe don't try this. I don't like sauerkraut. Okay, so to conclude the pastrami on rye discussion, thoughts, overview, uh, the rye bread is good. The pastrami is actually very good. I think it's cooked really, really well and it is a good flavor as far as pastrami goes. I do actually like it. I don't, I just don't like the sauerkraut. It is just too bitter, too vinegary. I just don't like that. Um, if you like it, then if that's your taste palette, if you like that kind of acidic vinegar taste, that's perfect for you. You're really gonna enjoy this. And they don't skimp out on the pastrami at all. Like it is a good size. I think it's good for what you're paying for it. Again, if you're not starving, this would be perfect to split and just get two sides of chips or two sides of soup, whatever you're feeling. So, so we're coming to find Quincy. Quincy, we've Quincy. got our shabby bags. They're each about, what do you say, 10, 15 pounds? Quincy. We're here for a while. Oh, you made it. Hi, really? we got you so something. Oh, you brought me lunch. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Why are they so heavy? Because we have a lot for you. Yeah, you didn't get to eat any of this awesome food. It's all of it. You, this you, is lunch for like five days. Yeah, maybe six or seven. Yes. All right, Boardwalk Deli, final thoughts. How did we feel about it? 
so many sandwiches. So many so sandwiches. So many sandwiches, and I was actually very pleasantly surprised. I was too. Wow. Who knew I would love tomato jam so much? So I, I of course, only had breakfast, but I loved breakfast there. I absolutely would stop by there if I happened to be in the area staying at one of the Epcot hotels. Of course, it's kind of out of the way for any other reason to get breakfast. Um, and even lunch, it's a little out of the way unless you intend to like go to Abracadabra or hang out on the boardwalk in the afternoon. Would you leave Epcot to walk over there for something? I don't think so. Yeah. Not during a festival, definitely. Yeah. Um, unless I was already over there, yeah. I don't think I would have head over to Boardwalk Deli, but I am super glad it's an option over there now. And if you're starving for a really good sandwich, I would say they're probably the best sandwiches in Disney World. Yeah, right? amazing yeah. sandwiches. They're great, wouldn't leave Epcot. Yeah. yeah, and if I, again, if I was over there already, gra grab them in a second, yeah. you know, just to grab a little snack. So I'm really glad it's an option now. I'm glad that we got to try everything on the menu so we can tell you what was good and not good for when you're there. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Now go watch our full review of Food & Wine Part 2. See you there. Bye.